Let's get things started. Ready? Go! Hello and welcome to Bounding into Comics. My name is John Trent. I'm the founder and editor-in-chief at Bounding into Comics. Today I got a story about Reacher actor Matthew Marsden recently warning that woke films and TV shows will not be fading into memory anytime soon despite massive losses at Netflix and other streaming companies. Marsden shared his warning to Twitter in reaction to actor Lawrence Fox's comments about Netflix losing over $50 billion in value after the company revealed it lost 200,000 paying subscribers between its 2021 fourth quarter financial report and its 2022 first quarter report. Not only did Netflix reveal they lost 200,000 subscribers, but they predicted they will lose 2 million in the second quarter of 2022. It wasn't just Netflix who saw their stock massively decline. Yahoo Finance noted that other streaming companies like Roku, Disney, Warner Brothers Discovery, and Paramount also faced losses after Netflix's report. Fox responded to a BBC article discussing this news writing on Twitter, turns out audiences prefer entertainment to woke moral lectures. That sentiment was also posited by billionaire Elon Musk when he wrote on Twitter, the woke mind virus is making Netflix unwatchable. Despite a seemingly growing movement against woke content and more and more audiences rejecting it, Marsden warns it's not going anywhere anytime soon. He explained on Twitter, this isn't going away anytime soon, despite a lot of content creators being sick of the woke agenda. They know it isn't popular, but the zealots are hell-bent on indoctrination. It's not enough to just not participate. Support those that will not bend the knee. Anyone who has been paying any attention to what's been happening in Florida can see the truth of Marsden's warning. Disney CEO Bob Chapek made it clear the company was fully behind pushing more and more woke content when he initially attempted to explain why the company would not publicly oppose legislation in Florida, trying to stop teachers and administrators from grooming children in kindergarten through third grade in regards to gender ideology and sexual orientation. In a company-wide email, Chapek initially explained why the company would not be opposing the bill. He wrote, As we have seen time and again, corporate statements do very little to change outcomes or minds. Instead, they are often weaponized by one side or the other to further divide and inflame. Simply put, they can be counterproductive and undermine more effective ways to achieve change. Instead of opposing the bill through lobbying efforts, Chapek made it crystal clear the company would push woke content aiming to get to kids outside the classroom. He revealed, I do not want anyone to mistake a lack of statement for a lack of support. We all share the same goal of a more tolerant, respectful world. Where we may differ is in the tactics to get there. As for what those tactics tactics are, he relayed, and because this struggle is much bigger than any one bill in any one state, I believe the best way for our company to bring about lasting change is through the inspiring content we produce, the welcoming culture we create, and the diverse community organizations we support. If that wasn't clear enough, he put some Windex on it, writing, there's a reason content is at the top of this list. For nearly a century, our company's stories have opened minds, inspired dreams, shown the world both as it is and how we wish it could be, and now more than ever before represent the incredible diversity of our society. We are telling important stories, raising voices, and I believe changing hearts and minds. Not only do you have statements like this from the head of the Walt Disney Company that make it abundantly clear they will be creating even more woke content, but nearly all of the major companies that have built in Hollywood production companies, including Warner Media, Comcast, and Paramount, are teaming up with the LGBTQ plus lobby GLAAD to promote transgenderism to children through a PSA created by the radical LGBTQ plus lobby organization. It stands to reason that if you are willing to run an ad promoting this unnatural and disordered lifestyle, that you would be including it in your actual content programming as well, which indeed they all pretty much do. Many of these companies have also inked deals with radical woke activists. In Warner Media's case, they have Ta-Nehisi Coates penning a film about Superman through J.J. Abrams' Bad Robot Company. Coates is the same writer who had Captain America claim he constantly opposes the country that is his namesake. He also decided to use Red Skull to mock and parody psychologist Jordan Peterson after he gained fame for criticizing the growing ridiculousness of woke pronoun usage. 
and that was in Marvel Comics, subsidiary of Disney. Warner Media has also inked deals with Black Lives Matter leaders and Blue Anon conspiracy theorists like Yale professor Dr. Philip Atiba Goff, specifically to create more woke programming. The rap reported Goff's deal was made to create, quote, original content informed by his work, as well as collaborate with the studio's creative roster on projects centered around social justice. The upcoming Spider-Woman director for Sony, Olivia Wilde, made it clear she intends to infuse the superhero genre with a feminist, ag feminist agenda. Speaking on the Shut Up Evan podcast, she, ex she explained that, quote, this incredible influx of female directors and storytellers getting to take hold of this genre of the superhero space and infuse it with their own perspective. She also noted she felt honored to be a part of, quote, this wave of women who are showing up and saying, we're not only going to step in and try and tell this story like men do, we're actually going to reframe the stories themselves. So it's abundantly clear woke content is not going away anytime soon, as Marsden warns. And it's unclear how big the losses have to be in order for there to be any actual change to the type of content being created for film and TV. My opinion on that matter is that it doesn't matter how big the losses are. These people are going to continue to push this because they value power and control more than they do actual dollar bills. Those are my thoughts on the matter. Let me know what you think. Do you think that uh, this woke programming is going to continue or pro potentially even accelerate as they, as they lose more money? Or do you think that there will actually be change and uh, we will start seeing these m massive mega corporations actually stop pushing this woke content? Let me know what you think below. My name is John Trent and you've been watching Bounding Into Comics.